This is uh, lecture six in the course Finite Group Theory at junior and senior level. First author is Barnard, and this is the textbook that I'm using for this course, or lecture set as I call them. It's in the Teach Yourself series, and the title is Mathematical Groups. And the topic for this lecture is uh, subgroups. Yeah, lecture, lecture number six. Now the previous lecture was uh, on groups, a rather long one with many parts. This one will be quite a bit shorter, the number of pages in chapter six, so the lecture number and the chapter number match, uh, is about half of what the previous lecture, the previous chapter was, was about, so it should be uh, a bit shorter, so a bit relief. Okay, so the very concept of a subgroup, what is that? Well, you can probably guess, uh, it's a subset, uh, in fact I've got the definition here, um, it's a subset of, of a group that itself is a group. Okay? So um, let's, let's label a subgroup by H and it's a subset of a group, so G, so here's, here's the symbolism for um, H being a subset of G, but it's also a group. This H here is also a group. Okay, so it's a subset and a group. That's what a subgroup is. Okay, so pretty pretty simple concept. Now to give you an example, um, if you go back to the previous lecture on uh, groups, you came across this group table, and if you remember, uh, it was these these um, elements here of the group are. Uh, Symmetry operations. Uh, operations on what? Well, uh, an equilateral triangle. So, um, a symmetry operation leaves the triangle looking the same as it did before you performed the operation. For example, uh, if you rotate this triangle about its centroid here by 120 degrees, it will just look the same. Like this point will have moved to here, and this point will have moved to here, and this one to here. So, it just it looks as though you didn't do anything. Right, so it's a, a symmetry operation, and that, uh, let's say, rotation anti-clockwise by 120 degrees, let's call that R. So that's a symmetry operation, R. Now if you rotate it in the same way about this point, but by 240 degrees, call that operation S. Okay? And so if you do, let's see, if you, if you do R, you'll rotate it 120, that's that much. And if you do S, that's double that, so that would be, it's 120, you'd be here somewhere, 240. Okay? And I is just do nothing. Now, this is a bit of revision. We talked about this uh, in the last lecture. Now, that's three so-called symmetry operations. Now, the three more, they're, they're the sort of the rotating around these three axes. So the, the Z rotation would be doing that, and the Y uh, would be doing that. And the X would be like the vertical one, doing, doing that. Okay? So you have six symmetry operations. And uh, we showed last time that this is actually a group. So this is not just a binary operator, binary operation table. It's a group table. Because um, these is set here with the, oh, by the way, the binary, the binary operator is just simply followed by. In other words, you perform one symmetry operation followed by this thing, another one. So you just do one and then another. Okay. So if you do, for example, uh, well, common sense. Okay. Say you perform first uh, a rotation R followed by another one, also R. Now, if you rotate twice, 120 degrees, you'll get 240 degrees. But that's S. So R. Binary operator R gives you S. That's sort of common sense. Okay. Now, uh, if you actually cut out a piece of paper or cardboard in the form of an equilateral triangle, and you label on one side at the corners A, B, C, and then you turn it over and again A, C, B, uh, you can fill in this uh, group table. Right? So there are six, uh, six members of the group, so again a bit of a revision, that means the order, remember that, the order of the group is six, the order of the group being by definition 
uh, the number of elements in the group, so in this case six. And so uh, the group table will be six squared, so 36. So it's a bit tedious, so I've written it out beforehand. Okay. Now look, uh, have, a, have a look at this line here. It's uh, isolating uh, these nine entries, these three members, and that you will probably not be surprised to discover that is a group. It's an actual group. It's not too hard to find. Uh, well, let, let, let's prove it as an exercise. Show, show this set of IRS with the same uh, binary operator, in other words, followed by, you know, do this operation first, followed by the next one. That's all, that's all that, that that means, followed by. Now, let's, uh, just, just by looking at the table, let's prove that it's a group. Okay. Now, can you remember from last lecture, to prove that a set with a binary operator is a group, you have to satisfy four conditions. Now, <laughs> we discussed this at length last time, a long lecture. Can you remember the four conditions? Uh, the set and the binary operator have to be closed. Right? So the result that you get has to be belong to the set that you start with. So closure. Uh, associativity. So for, well, for any, any three members of your uh, set, A, B, C, uh, A, B, C is A, B, C, okay? And that's true for, for any three A, B, C members of your set. So uh, you know, we, it's a bit tedious, but we, we could show that this is is uh, associative, that's, that's, that's what this property is, if it's true for any three members of your set, associativity, so uh, it's a bit tedious, but yeah, you, could, you could do that. Uh, there has to be a unit, now remember, uh, a unit is usually written uh, little e, so little e a, for, for any member of your uh, group a, that's equal to a e, and that's just equal to a. Okay. Now the unit here, in fact, is the I. That's the do nothing. You know, don't rotate or flip around. You know, just do nothing. So I by anything is just anything. So I by R is R. I by S is S. I by X is X, and so on. Okay. So the unit, in this case, the unit is just I. Right. So uh, there is there is a unit, a unit element, and the fourth condition, uh, each element has to have an inverse. And what does that mean? So for all A belonging to the group, there is an inverse. That's usually another element. It doesn't have to be, but usually. Uh, there is a, an AI such that A inverse A equals A inverse equals E. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, what's the inverse of I? Well, it's just I, right? I, I, I gives you I. What's the inverse of R? Uh, R, R? R by what gives you I? Well, R by S gives you I. So, R, well, big R, big R inverse is just S, right? So, what's the inverse of S? Uh, so, S by what gives you I? R. So. Okay. So each each element has an inverse. Uh, we have associativity. We have a unit, which is just I, and we have closure. Therefore, this is a group. But it's obviously a subset, right? IRS is obviously because there's three elements. Is obviously a subset of the whole group because the order of the group is six, and the order of this subgroup is three. So it's obviously it's a subset. Okay, so we have here a subset and a subgroup because it's also a group of the whole thing of the group. So uh, typically in um, finite group theory, uh, often a subset gets labelled by the capital letter H, right? sort of like the next letter to G, G, you know, big G for group, sort of obvious. Okay, all right. Uh, now. Um, there, there are two subgroups of any group 
that are called trivial, because they're sort of, well, they are trivial. There's, there's the group itself, right? So that, that's not so interesting. But uh, if, if you look here, this uh, symbol here for uh, a subset, notice, notice the horizontal line under here, that means equality. So your H could be equal to G. So, so this set or group could be equal to, to this uh, set or group. Uh, so if that's the case, that's an example of one of the trivial subgroups. It's the group itself. Right? That's not so interesting. And the other trivial subgroup is the other extreme, the smallest possible group, which is just uh, one element. And so the order of the group is one. You know, it, it, its size is one. It only has one element. And it's E, the unit. Now, if it's a subgroup, you know, <laughs> the four conditions have to be satisfied. And one of those is that there's a unit, right? a unit element. So the smallest possible group is just the group of one element, which is the unit element. So just like little brackets E. Okay? So here, these two groups are called, or subgroups, are called trivial subgroups. Now, it's more interesting to have a subgroup that has an order that's less than the group itself. Right? And yeah, something like this. Um, Here's, here's a proper subgroup, like a legitimate one, if you like. Uh, it's larger. It's larger than the trivial group. This, this 